Hello, I'm Stan Stoliker, and we're at the Global Fun Forum at the Hub Culture Pavilion here in gorgeous, beautiful Bermuda. Joining me now is Stuart Lacey, who's the founder of Trunomi, an incredible company working on the intersection of consent and the rest of us, I guess. Is that how I'd say it? <laughs> Very Stuart? well, yes, absolutely. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Good, good. Thanks for joining us. Um, tell us about Trunomi. Well, what do you guys do and how do you do it? It's great, thank you. Well, Trunomi really uh, is in the business of recognizing that the data that we all create, whether it be uh, for the financial markets or a Fitbit or your smart device, increasingly we all have rights, title and possibly interest in the data we create. And much of that data is now subject to privacy laws, which means that companies that try to use it need more and more often consent or permission to really release the value of that data. Uh, Trinomi has, in a, I guess, a global first and created a proprietary system that actually allows uh, people like yourself and myself, the consumer, to actually really release and possibly even monetize the value of their personal data through consent. So you enable consent? We enable consent. Okay, got it. And can you give us an example of how you're doing that? Like, what's an example of a use case from a, a bank or a client that would, how would they integrate your technology into their suite? Great question. So, um, quite simply, one of the biggest issues in the financial markets uh, are people opening accounts. Uh, many people have had that issue. You go and you have to constantly reproduce all the documentation each and every time. Uh, well, a way around that is effectively to be able to have your mobile device and be able to actually just push it. Mm -hmm. Sounds easy, but it's actually complicated. So you have one kind of master profile and you then send your profile to the bank instead of the bank trying to aggregate your information? Correct. And even more interestingly, uh, we at Tronomi believe that uh, decentralized systems are the future. As such, not only do you get the creation of this profile, but we return the use and the utility of it to actually the person who created the data, meaning the owner of the data set. Mm -hmm. That actually means that rather than it being sitting in a registry or with a big brother, actually it's your data again, which it kind of should have been anyway. So this is emerging to be one of the biggest issues on the web. Uh, you may know MIT Media Lab and some others uh, last year worked with companies like ours and Ripple and um, a number of companies to create something called the Windover Principles. Yeah. And the Windover Principles set out this idea that individuals should own their own data and that there are certain guidelines about how this data should be used. Is Trinomi sort of following the Windover Principles and how are you enabling or how do you plan to enable individual data ownership? Because, you know, the world isn't quite ready yet or it's not quite there from a technology standpoint to where Windover wants it to be because you just can't spin up a VPN for every single user in a network. Correct. Um, how are you guys moving toward that ideal? It's a good question. I think Windover and, and groups like yourself at MIT, they're doing a fantastic job. I think agreeing standards and some kind of homogenization of how we all treat it is critical. Um, we are really leading from a technology side. Um, and one of the things that we really believe is, is critically important is as people recognize that you have a title or right or interest to your data, that we then find ways in which that can be then communicated or shared outbound. And that is the kind of standards you're talking about. Um, in the financial markets, uh, we talk about that with identification, credit card data, that kind of data. But it extends much further, as you know, uh, healthcare. Um, uh, you could be talking about any other kind of vetting or identity system whereby you're trying to prove that you are who you say you are. And that just comes down to counterparty, which is, do I know who I'm dealing with? Yeah. Um, the old days of buying meat from your butcher and then paying at the month end are gone because he knew you or you knew him. Now everyone has to worry about this digital relationship and how do they actually know who it is they're dealing with. So and then counterparty what, trust in a digital age? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So talk to me, let's talk for a second about um, the culture of your company. I, I love Trinomi partially because it's <laughs> like us, based in Bermuda. Right. And I feel like there's a very small band of companies that are tech companies who have their home here, but who have a global footprint. And you guys are really one of those companies. Talk to me about the culture of being based in Bermuda, but then having one foot in the Silicon Valley and the other foot in London. How does yeah. that work? I could not have been more blessed to have actually founded the company here. Uh, the access to um, amazing world-class advisory board members, the depth and pool of talent, uh, access to capital, um, and then an immensely long-standing and very high-quality regulatory infrastructure um, puts Bermuda as a jurisdiction which is unparalleled, I think, for a launch of our kind. Um, our access to legal talent, 
uh, financial and other talent is also very deep here. Great connections, fiber optics, etc. Um, we kind of joke Even about it. Even though it's in the middle of the ocean. Well, you know, we right. joke about it, but we say we're kind of like the new Bermuda Triangle. It's Silicon Valley, Bermuda, and London is the new triangle. I love it. And um, it's been really exciting. You know, um, people laugh. Uh, everyone wants to come here and do due diligence on us, which we, which we welcome. <laughs> um, but, you know, when you get down to actual business, um, you're four hours between London and four hours between the valley. Yep. Uh, less than two hours into New York. Um, fantastic uh, connectivity and a really strong regulatory and legal environment, um, which means that the rule of law here is extremely important. Right. And that uh, is, is befits a company that's working in, especially in our space. Yeah, I've always thought Bermuda had a bit of that legal infrastructure that the, the British built with some of the entrepreneurialism that the Americans built. That's right, so. that's right. Classic natural fit. So I noticed on your phone you had this Minecraft um, <laughs> thing. I don't know if we can, if we can zoom in on this. But um, tell us about this, because I think this goes into the idea of, I saw this and I'm, I thought Silicon Valley, this is a digital company, we've got a sticker, it's even like kind of, you know, uh, suggesting Minecraft. Tell me a little bit about this and how do you guys reach out and build relationships with your customers using these little kinds of tricks? So if I'd been actually prepared for that question, I actually would have brought one of the figurines. So we 3D print these uh, trinomians. They're small, um, they're custom skinned, but the idea is, is um, one of the lessons I learned a long time ago is do what doesn't scale. When you're a small company, you can. So we actually give custom gifts to all of our first customers, the important people that help Trinomia along, and we call them and ourselves Trinomians. And being a Trinomian means that not only do you enjoy the great culture that we're building at the company, but you feed back into the culture. As an example, everyone who's now got one of the figurines is traveling the world, taking socialized photos of the Trinomian and pouring them into our Pinterest and Instagram site which means that we're getting this kind of fun brand awareness. But being a Trinomian goes further. Um, you know, our culture is really one of transparency, one of understanding our place in the digital age. And Minecraft was a natural fit because in Minecraft, my son has taught me at least, you kind of build the world in your image. You are at the root, perhaps, of your experience in that world. You can construct and deconstruct based on your ability to control. And isn't that kind of funny that perhaps what we're doing, your digital ID route, your ability to port who you are is actually very much in correct flux with where Minecraft stands. So we actually think it was a perfect natural fit for us. So uh, just as we wrap up here, talk to me about growth. Like what are the metrics of the company? What are your growth targets? Um, I know that you guys are growing fast. Um, tell me what's happening in that front and how are you guys uh, approaching the capital markets to be able to fund your growth? Uh, we're in the enviable position right now that we're growing quickly but not fast and as such uh, hiring and building culture is critical. Um, we use a lot of consultants until such time as we know that the kind of people we're working with are really the people that will spend their lives with our company and really become part of the family. Um, opening in Silicon Valley with development, uh, opening into Europe with, um, with customer facing is really important. Very, very robust markets, especially in Europe with um, privacy being at the forefront. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, you know, we feel that um, uh, with today's social world and the ability to use Twitter, Facebook, um, and products like Hub Culture to ensure that you can share really what it feels like to be part of that group and how the company can grow is, is part of it. Then there's capital. And we we're very pleased to say, and I, I can't release just the details just yet, but within a couple of weeks we'll have closed our, our, our next large financing round. Um, right. And what's very exciting about that is I feel that the space we're in the opportunities we have, but equally the structure we have, Bermuda, um, London, and Silicon Valley, is a very attractive place right now, especially in financial technology, which we're in, to actually position a company for really large global growth. And right. so uh, we feel deeply and, and very solidly rooted there. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Stuart, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, I'm Stan Stoniker at the Terrace Pavilion for Hub Culture here in Bermuda at the Global Fund Forum. Check out trunomi.com and uh, see if you can get yourself one of those 3D printed Minecraft <laughs> Trunomians. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much. Thank you.